When I'm fishing like Lake Gunners without on the grass, here's what I'm fixing to do. I'm fixing to head out to the water, but I'm gonna rig up a couple of different rods. I'm gonna be cranking eel grass on the outside of the hydrilla. So the grass may go from eight foot up to four foot. So instead of fighting that, I want the, just the right drag through the grass when I'm throwing a DT6. And over my years of experience at Gunners when I'm fishing up here enough and other grass lakes, I know that a DT6 in the wintertime is really hard to beat. Let me tell you why. Now, this ain't a bull crap sales pitch. Here's the deal. It's the vibration, it's a balsa bait. It doesn't have that hard erratic vibration. It's a real tight, real subtle bait. It's supernatural. The water temperature's in the low 50s. The shad in the lake ain't jumping around like they're smoking meth. They're moving at a very slow pace. So you're trying to match that. That's where the balsa comes in. That's why it excels in cold water. So once I establish this is the vibration and about the size bait they want, why would I change? If I want to go shallower or deeper, I simply just change line sizes and give them the same bait again and again and again. So I'm going to adjust line sizes. I'm fixing to rig up three rods. I have one here with 12. I'm going to rig up the same cranking rod with 14 and one with 16. I'm going to tie three different sixes on and I get out there and I can adjust the, how that grass and how I want to fish it simply by just changing rods and changing the line. It's going to be just that simple. So bear with me. I'm going to tie the six on this one with 12 and I'm going to start working my way up, spooling rods up go all the way up to 16 and we're going to control our depth by upsizing the line. If your line's too light and the grass is too tall, you're going to fight it. So what you're trying to do is eliminate the fight and let the bait do the work simply by just rigging up a few rods. The fish are just now coming in off the river a lot. They're trying to get in here. This is the first place they moved to to warm up. You see the edge of the eelgrass right here. See how it makes these defined lines? And these fish will get around this and on it. Fish don't get in eelgrass. That's the misconception. They run these edges just like a deer in a cutover, or they'll get on top of it when the sun gets out. There will be a hole right here he can get down in, but he can't get down in this. He just gets up on top of it, and as the sun gets high, he can actually feel that sunshine and they'll sit on top of that green eelgrass and just warm up. So what we're gonna to try to do, we're gonna take a, a DT6. I've rigged up three rods, one on 12, one on 14, and one on 16. Then I'm gonna throw the demon color out here, DT6 demon, and I'm gonna to try to see if we can make one of these big ones bite. You can see how I got kind of my waypoint set here and most of them where I've got everything highlighted right there where it breaks off. You can see I got a cluster of three a lot of times in the pre-spawn stage, when they first start moving up, they bunch up. They just bunch up. That's why a lot of tournaments in February and March have the highest weights on the lake. Uh, once these bass right here go all the way to the bank and start to spawn, the weights will drop off because there won't be so many threes and fours and fives sitting in one place. Typically pre-spawn, when you find an area that one or two of them want to be, there's two or three hundred of them want to be there. They really bunch up this time of year. That's why you see a little cluster of waypoints right there. To get the bait down, I'm gonna point my rod tip straight at it. I'm gonna to start to retrieve. I'm kind of just winding. I'm actually just feeling for the grass. It's, all right, I start to touch it right there. I kind of swoop it, hold my rod tip, pop it up. What that's doing is it's free of that bait. If you'll notice the DT6, the real thin bait, it just jumps right out of it and it stops. The boss is just gonna kind of sit there before it starts flying back. So it's just kind of sitting right there in their face. Put the rod tip back down, real bite down into the grass pop it out. You don't want to jerk into the grass like this because you're just jerking, you're just burying the bait up worse than it is. So as soon as you hit the grass, bring your rod tip up. Yeah, there he is. I turned and got out, just got out a little further. And I reached, just reached down and picked up my 12 pound test because the depth that broke off. And I got me an old gunner's little bass right there. Oh, go on demon, go on demon boat flip on that 12 and that's what it's all about the demon dt6 to me you ain't gonna beat it in the winter time you can try but you ain't gonna beat it and i literally just was throwing 14 the depth change i come right back i said i want to get a little deeper you can look i started sitting in six or seven turned the boat started throwing with the wind 
bang. Wasn't a big one, but it's just that simple. Line controls depth, multiple rods controls different levels of water. You can go 12, 14, 16, 12, 14, 16 all day and be super efficient in all different heights of grass. It's often overlooked. There he is. He smoked it. He smoked it. Oh, you are a dirty little, oh, pull on that demon. Come on. Oh, he got a little jumper. We got a little old jumper up here, boys. Oh, I ain't going to get all silly and start giggling. God, I like this. A little spot locking. So what I do in a tournament situation like that, I just hit spot lock. I've caught two in a row. I've set the boat up. I got the wind in my, my back. So not only, not only does one thing for me when we're talking the, D, the whole DT series, it enables you to cast. And you can see we got a little bit of wind out here, so you can't always have the wind in your back. It's not always going to be picture perfect. You may have to work around to get to it. So sometimes with this bait, it just helps because I can I can throw through a lot of the wind. So what we've done now is we've had two bites right there. As my buddy Darian would say, he said, Gerald, there's something very magical on your graft. He said, there's bass that live under those yellow boxes. And he said, every time we get close to one of those yellow boxes, your cork goes under. So I'm throwing toward one of those yellow boxes. So you'll notice it out of swap position of me, and I was turn around and throw backwards. The trolling motor is going to hold me dead. There he is. Oh, he salted it. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that this don't suck. I mean, I hate that y'all having to watch. Oh, he's a little bigger, ain't he? Oh. This is just a seven foot, this is a medium light rod. It's kind of soft tip. You can see why, because he is a puller boy. <laughs> that don't suck. These ones call, I ain't gonna let him hurt my knees. I'm gonna pick him up. Oh God, he's springy. He thought he was a little bigger. Choked it. Wintertime bassin. I don't know what else to tell you. Showed you what the grass looks like. Showed you what the bait looks like. Showed you the rig up. I ain't showing you nothing else. You ain't getting on my yellow boxes. 